Okay, are you a physical therapist who is learning about scoliosis treatment, maybe a physical therapy student who's learning about scoliosis treatment or scoliosis in general, uh, or you are a PT who has his first scoliosis patient in the clinic and you're wondering what to do? Well, this video is for you. I wanted to go over specifics on how we're taught as physical therapists to look at scoliosis and why some of that might not be totally correct. So thanks for watching this video and let's get into it. Okay, so if you're anything like me in PT school, this was a long time ago, I graduated in, in 2007. Uh, in PT school, we heard a lot about anatomy. We learned about different diagnoses. We learned about spinal deformities. We learned about scoliosis. But when it came to talking about what to do for scoliosis, that's where it kind of, uh, kind of fell off for me. I remember being in school and, and not really understanding how to treat it, other than a very simplistic view of treating by stretching the concavity and strengthening the convexity. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Uh, if you're a physical therapist, that probably sounds very familiar. That the idea is if we have a curve that we, well, let me show you a curve here. If we have a curve like this, then we need to stretch the concavity to open that up, and then we need to strengthen the convexity to, for those muscles to pull that spine straighter. So thinking about it, uh, you know, simplistically, that's something that, that may make sense. And it's something that we're taught and a lot of us still subscribe to. And I still see this a lot online with people who are discussing how to treat scoliosis. I still see this a lot with medical professionals outside of physical therapy. And the problem is this is not the right way to treat scoliosis. So I'll talk about specifics on how to treat scoliosis and specifics on how to know when you're out of your depth in treating scoliosis. But uh, let's talk about why the stretch the concave side and strengthen the convex side is not the right way to treat scoliosis. There are many reasons for this and this is something I'm very passionate about because I see this happening a lot. Uh, when I was, so I, I practiced as just an orthopedic specialist for uh, nine years before I got into scoliosis treatment. And I remember occasionally I'd have someone with scoliosis come into the clinic, but I never really knew what to do with them. Uh, I was always just strengthening their core. I always felt like I was not able to address their scoliosis because I wasn't. I wasn't able to do that because I hadn't been trained in how to do that. So my my view of it early on was was the same. Here we have uh, probably the most common curve type that we see with scoliosis. We have a right thoracic and a left lumbar uh, scoliosis curve. So if we use the logic that we're going to stretch the concavity, so here's the concavity right here, and if we're going to stretch this to open it up, Great, we've created mobility. Okay, now we need to strengthen the, the uh, convex side to, to pull it. I don't know if you can see my arrows there. Um, that we're strengthening the convex side to pull it to open up the concave side. It makes sense kind of if we were only looking at this plane, but we have two curves here. So how do we stretch this concavity without affecting this concavity, uh, this convexity? And how do we stretch this concavity without affecting this convexity? It's very hard to do. And, and it, well, it doesn't actually work. Let me, let me talk a little bit more about why that is the case. Scoliosis is a three-dimensional problem. That's something that, that we did learn in, in uh, PT school. So scoliosis is a, a three-dimensional problem. We have a curve, which we call the Cobb angle. We have a rotation that the spine rotates. So when we have a curve that curves this way, the spine will rotate this way, and the ribs rotate back on this side and forward on the right side. That's actually how we 
find scoliosis is someone bends forward and we're looking to see if ribs are higher on one side versus the other. So we have the Cobb angle, the curve like this. We have the rotation, which needs to be addressed. And we also usually will have what's called a hypokyphosis, where instead of having a normal kyphosis, a curve like this, we'll see that the spine is straight, straighter than it, that, than it normally would be. So in all three dimensions, we need to address all three dimensions to accurately treat the scoliosis curve. So I think that's a, a huge reason that this is too simplistic of a view. We can't just stretch here because what are we doing with the rotation? Are we increasing the rotation? Are we decreasing it? What about the, hy the hypokyphosis? Are we increasing hypokyphosis or are we reducing it? This doesn't address the three-dimensional nature of the scoliosis really at all. And one of the biggest things that we see, we get so focused in on the Cobb angle that we don't realize that the rotation is actually sometimes the biggest part of the deformity. We just don't measure that on x-ray. And so if we're stretching out the concavity and strengthening the convexity, we're not addressing all three dimensions of the curve. And to truly treat the scoliosis curve, we need to address all three dimensions. Uh, that's one reason. It's not a three-dimensional treatment. The other reason is, in the research lately, what, what they're finding is the muscles on both sides of the spine, so we have muscles on both sides of the spine here, right? The muscles on both sides of the spine are weak for different reasons. This view doesn't take into account the strength of the concave side, it just takes into account that it's tighter. And the concave side muscles are shortened, but they're also weak. The convex side muscles are lengthened, but they're also weak for different reasons. This is stretched over the curve. It doesn't have as much mechanical advantage to contract. This one's compressed in the curve, and it also doesn't have as much mechanical advantage to contract. And if it contracts, it pulls more into the scoliosis. So how do we stabilize this spine and keep it from continuing to curve and progress if we're only increasing stability and strength on the convex side and we're leaving the concave side to just get weaker? It's not a good way to treat it and it usually just creates imbalance in the spine. A lot of times we'll see, well all the time with scoliosis, on the convex side we'll see a rib prominence. So the ribs will push back on that side and create a prominence. If we're constantly strengthening those muscles, those muscles are already the ones that I usually will see having more pain in my scoliosis patients. The reason for that is those muscles, when gravity pushes down on the spine and it pushes into the curve, those muscles are the ones that are overworked. Because they're overworked, they can be painful, not all the time, but sometimes. But they're already overworked. If we work on strengthening those convex muscles, we're asking overworked muscles to do more. And we're just gonna get more soreness, more imbalance, because now we're creating more of the imbalance and more stress on those muscles. So, especially in my adult patients, my adult patients usually will have pain on the convex side of the curve. If we just strengthen the convex side of the curve, it just creates more pain because we need to offload those muscles. The way that we offload these muscles is by getting the muscles in the concavity to, to pull their weight, to help stabilize and to help strengthen and stabilize that curve because we need both sides to be stable so that we can stabilize the spine. Hopefully that, that makes sense. It was, it was a tough thing to really understand as I started scoliosis treatment. And we went through a lot of training with this and I'm trying to simplify it so that it makes sense. But in the spine, we don't wanna create more imbalance. And that's what we're doing when we just strengthen this convex side. When we're afraid to strengthen the concave side because it will create the, more of a curve. 
which it will if you do it incorrectly. So the research lately is showing that the paraspinal muscles are weak for different reasons. We get weakness here because they're shortened. We get what's called fatty infiltration into the, into the muscle and that makes it weaker because then muscle tissue is replaced by fat tissue. We get weakness on the convex side of the curve because it's lengthened, and, and, but it's weak as well. We need a solution to treat this in a three-dimensional way. And the cool thing is we have that solution with using the Schroth method and the C's approach to treat a scoliosis curve. And I think it's important to understand that these techniques are not just techniques that you can get off YouTube. These aren't techniques that you can just pick up by studying a little bit more about the spine. These are specific techniques that you need to be trained in to treat someone with scoliosis. So that brings me to my final point. When do you know that you're out of your depth as a physical therapist in treating someone with scoliosis? I think that that question is when you feel like you're not that you need to address the scoliosis curve, but you're not trained in doing that. Uh, a quick story, I had a, a new grad uh, PT that called me from, uh, it's about 20, 20 minutes south of here in Lehigh. And he called me up and he said, hey, can I ask you a question? And I said, sure. He said, I have a, a patient in the, in the office who has a 30 degree curve. She's a 12 degree girl, uh, 12, she's a 12 year old girl with a 30 degree curve, can you, te can you tell me which exercises I should do with her to help her curve not progress? This was a hard one for me because it's a new grad, I wanna, I wanna be tactful in saying this, but a 12 year old with a 30 degree curve that's progressing, he should not be seeing that patient because he's not trained in how to work with scoliosis in a way that stops progression of the curve. So that's one, one reason you'd be out of your depth. If you have a curve that's progressive, you're treating the curve specifically to stop it from getting worse. They need something specific to the curve, three-dimensionally, to treat the scoliosis. That, that's, just the, that's just the fact of the matter. They need someone who's trained in scoliosis treatment. So if you're seeing someone like that and you're like, I just need to learn more, that is not the way to go with this. You're out of your depth, send that person to someone who does Schroth exercises or go get trained yourself. But you, you do not have time to get trained in Schroth for that patient. It's gonna take you too long. So that's one scenario. Scenario number two, if someone is having back pain and it's on both sides of the spine, and they have scoliosis, but it's not a big curve, do they need scoliosis-specific treatment? The answer is probably no. If it's symmetrical pain, they may just have pain just like everyone else in our world that has back pain. Treat them with stability, strengthening, unless they have a significant imbalance. And then if they're not responding to that and you feel like the scoliosis curve is more to blame for their pain, then send them to someone who can treat the scoliosis curve specifically. So I have no problem with people treating back pain in people with scoliosis uh, with strengthening, stability, looking at their flexibility, stuff like that. But don't give them the sense that you're treating their scoliosis specifically because you're not. Even if you're stretching the concavity, strengthening the convexity, you are not treating their scoliosis specifically. Uh, one other scenario, with adult patients, adult patients can definitely have progression as they have degenerative spine conditions and things like that. So with those patients, if you are seeing a significant curve that's affecting things because of that curve, you most likely want to have that curve specifically addressed. For example, I had, I had a patient right before I actually started this practice who had a big scoliosis curve and she had a big pelvic imbalance so her hips were shifted to the right, kind of like this is. And she was getting 
hip bursitis out here on this hip right here. And it would not, not, it would not respond. No matter what we did, we could strengthen it up as much as we wanted, but it would not respond. Looking back, I realized that the hip bursitis was a, related to her shift in her pelvis because of her scoliosis curve. That's why it wouldn't get better. It wasn't because her hips were weak. It was because her alignment was off. Until we address her alignment, the hip bursitis is going to keep happening. So that's an example of the underlying scoliosis is causing an imbalance that's creating the issue. If you want to address the issue, you have to address the alignment. And to address the alignment, you have to address it in a scoliosis-specific exercise program or method. And uh, I can't overemphasize this enough. If you have someone who needs treatment specific to their curve, send them to someone who can treat them specific to their curve because this way of treating it is not right and it does not affect the curve in the way that that we think it should uh, as we're trained in PT school and and uh, even stuff online so hopefully that's helpful in discussing what you can do and when you're out of your depth uh, I, I welcome any comments on this hopefully we have some physical therapists who are watching this and hopefully this sheds some light on what where your limits are in treating scoliosis. And I have, very often I will have patients who come in and they'll say, oh, I've done physical therapy for my scoliosis. Then I have to dig a little bit more. What were you doing for your physical therapy for your scoliosis? And most of the time I'm finding that they're not doing anything specific to the curve. So sorry to keep rambling about this. This is kind of a soapbox that I have. And it's something that I'm very passionate about. If you are looking to get into treatment, into treating someone specific to their curve, and you enjoy that, great. Go get certified in one of the treatment techniques for scoliosis. If you don't want to go down that road, I think now there's, there are trained people in all states in the U.S. and a lot of countries. There's probably someone who you can refer them to. So I hope this was helpful. And hopefully this made sense. Uh, it's kind of a confusing topic, but as physical therapists, we need to do what's best for our patients. And doing be what's best for our patients is understanding what the deformity is, is causing and addressing that specifically if we can. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video and leave a comment. I'd love for you to leave a comment. But I'll do some more education on stuff like this in the future, and we'll see you next time.